In the second lecture for Chapter 10, we'll be looking at hypothesis testing, but here's the key, a known population standard deviation. That is rarely going to be the case, but we will take a look at examples when I know the standard deviation of the population. So the steps in conducting a test. The first is you have to identify the null. You'll have to write that statement. Be sure to use the equal sign. Then you will have to identify the alternative. Is it less than or to the left? Is it greater than or to the right? Or is it not sure, greater than or less than, not sure? That would be two-sided. So we'll have to be able to identify those null and alternative hypotheses. Check to see that the population is normally distributed. Why would I want to do that? It's a very important step. If it's normally distributed, I can use my table on page 407, which was looking at that curve. If it's not normally distributed, I cannot use that table. There are other tables, but in this course, we're only looking at the normal distribution. If it is not normal distribution, we need to look to see if the sample size is greater than 30. All of this came out of Chapter 8. It said in Chapter 8 that if I take a sample and look at its distribution, and my sample came from a normally distributed population, my sample distribution will be normally distributed. If my population is not normally distributed, but my sample size is greater than 30, my sampling distribution will be normally distributed. That comes from the lab that you did with picking those numbers 1 through 5. That was a uniform distribution that then we proved that our sampling distribution was a normal distribution. Number three. Third step, standardize the sample mean. I need to know the number of standard deviations or step I am above or below the center, which is the mean. Now look at this formula. Again, it came from Chapter 8. Why is this formula different than when I was in Chapter 6? If you recall, Chapter 6 was a single observation, chapter 8, I'm now looking at sample means. I get a better idea if I'm looking at a group of things to make a determination about the population and not one single item. How is the formula different? I'm still looking at the number of standard deviations, but the standard deviation size changed. The bigger my sample, the less spread I am, and that spread is based on lowercase n, the size of my sample calculate the p-value. The p-value, if you recall, is the probability of getting those observations if that probability is small, it's unlikely that the null is true, I will reject. Rejection region to the left when I'm looking my p-value up, I'll be using my table, which will show an example. On the left, I'm looking at this region in my table, which is the value itself, the value in the table. If I'm looking at to the right, I'm looking at this region, which would be 1 minus the value in the table. If you recall, the table reads probabilities to the left. And if I'm looking at two-sided, what I'll be looking at there is this region. If you recall from our study of normal distribution, this table is, or this curve is symmetric. So if I find the value down here, if it's two-sided, I need to find the area on this direction as well. So I will double the p-value. The p-value is the probability of getting the observation. Because it's normally distributed, I'm looking for that space underneath the curve. Lastly, I'll make a decision by comparing the p-value to the given level of significance. The level of significance is set by the researcher. That's the cutoff. That's where I will decide to accept or reject based on that probability. The p-value is the probability of my observations, or x-bar. These will be stated before. The data shows me my p-value, and if my p-value is unlikely, less than alpha tells me to reject. Small p tells you to reject the null. 
if my p-value is greater than alpha, I will accept my null. The alpha level is that chance of committing an error or making a mistake in my decision making. So the next lecture, we will look at examples that apply these steps.